The Knicks wrapped up their West Coast trip with a 123 to 107 win over the Trail Blazers. They went two and two on the trip. So let's bring in our guy Alex Chateris of Knicks Fan TV because he knows the people and he knows the Knicks. All right, your professor Alex right now. It's time to give out some grades. We got the report card ready. Grade this road trip on with on overall team performance. I had to get well, Brandon. First and foremost, thank you for having me on. Always appreciate talking to you and talking Knicks. Um, if I had to give a grade for this team, it'd be a B minus. You know, entering if entering this road trip after knowing that. Jalen Brunson wasn't going to be available. You know, you'd want to see this team just survive. So going two and two have been the best outcome, which is what they got. But when you watch how everything unfolded, you just saw that it was a little, it was a little discombobulated at times because you needed this team to show that they were still able to attack the teeth of the defense without Brunson was known for being able to get downhill. Quickly was a little hesitant to start doing that. You wanted to see Julius Randle getting to his spots. Instead, we saw him doing a little too much at times instead of getting into rhythm. And then you just saw the struggles from like RJ to start off the road trip, Quentin Grimes, even Mitchell Robinson. Mitch had a very difficult West Coast trip. But at the end of the day, they were able to come out two and two. So you got to give a B minus for the heart and effort. And speak about heart, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, the entire bench just stood up for this entire Knicks team. So I got to give it a B minus overall. Oh, if I would have got a B minus in high school, I would have been gritty and all over the screen right now. But when you're going for a playoff <laughs> run, I don't know if that's a good thing. You meant uh you you mentioned Hart, Hart and uh Hartenstein, those guys. Who showed up and who went missing? Uh, so let me start with the guys who showed up. It was the Knicks bench, you know, between McBride, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, Obi Toppin. All these guys showed up in, in massive ways, especially against the Los Angeles Lakers. And the Portland Trailblazers. I mean, last night you had McBride getting 18 points, did some facilitating, some impressive defense that we know we're going to get from him every time he touches the court. Josh Hart, since that trade, he's just been an energy boost and just padding the stat sheet no matter what in a positive way, right? Last night you see him getting eight assists. You see him getting uh, so many rebounds. He's, he's getting you the points. He's doing everything you need on the court, plus the defense, the grittiness. Truly, his last name matches what he's given this team, which is hard. But then you got to talk about Isaiah Hartenstein. He has been scoring this on the West Coast, West Coast trip efficiently, but defense, when Mitch was struggling, he was out there getting rebounds. You know, he was averaging about a, a little over three offensive rebounds per game. He's getting nine rebounds in total, getting you 2.3 assists as well. So you're starting to see that playmaking that we that was, you know, talked about this offseason when the Knicks acquired him. So between those guys, between all three of those guys, you got you got to give them kudos. And I can't forget about my guy Obi Toppin. Obi averaging about nine points in 13 minutes. He shows how he can be efficient and effective in his limited time. So shout out to him as well. But for the guys that were missing, I mean, Quentin Grimes, he had a struggle against, you know, D'Angelo Russell and, and Damian Lillard, two guys who are just offensive maestros. So understandable. And this is his first time playing an entire season. He only played 40 some odd games last year. He's up to 59 right now. So understandable that he might be hitting a, you know, a sophomore wall or, or, or slump for this time, but we're really going to need to see him come around if the Knicks are going to make that playoff push. And then Mitchell Robinson, you know, he had a tough time uh, guarding DeMontis Abonis, Joseph Nurkic, Anthony Davis. Um, so all those guys gave Mitch some, some issues and we're going to see, need to see Mitch bounce back as well. But like I said earlier, thanks for Hartenstein. And I won't say that these guys went missing, but I'll say that these guys struggled because you saw Julius Randle. It's hard for him to get into the game without uh, Brunson. Emmanuel quickly, like I said, didn't really attack the teeth of the defense. R.J. Barrett started to get his legs going uh, once the Lakers game came around, but he had a rough start to start the West Coast trip as well. Mitch Rob got to stay off Snapchat and, as, as well. Uh, all right, that's, 11 that's games true. left in the season. What do you take? What do you want to see from this team? Uh, so... You know, they're 2-2 two and two without Jalen Brunson right now on this West Coast trip. Five, five, of, five of four without Brunson on the season as a total. But with 11 games left into the season, you know, I'm looking for this team to continue to battle, get the fifth seed, um, and just maintain that playoff like push bec that, because you need to see this team continue to be a high-efficient offense when Brunson comes back. And going into the postseason – that's what they're going to be doing, man. You know, you're going to see Jalen Brunson. You're going to see Julius Randle being those ISO experts. 
And I want to see through the remainder of the season that they can maintain that offensive explosiveness while maintaining that strong defense. Now, the defense is a Tom Thibodeau-led team. We saw after he made the nine-man rotation change, they've still been a solid defense. So we know we're going to get that on a nightly basis. But that offense, what we saw during that nine-game winning streak, that needs to come around. And that's kind of been wavering a little bit without Jalen Brunson. But we don't know when Jalen Brunson's getting back. But I need to see this offense uh, back to being explosive the way that it was. All right, Alex, thanks for joining us. Thank you.